Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the Monday, September 19th, 2022, regu reg regularly scheduled uh, select board meeting for the town of Berlin. To my left is Flo Smith, Joe Staub. To my right is Carl Parton, Dave Sawyer. I'm Brad Town. With us also is Vince Connie, our town administrator, and Diane Isabel, town treasurer. Additions or changes to the agenda, agenda uh, Vince? No, sir. Uh, public comment. Hearing none. Um, community visit program presentation. Vince? Yep. Someone right here? Hey, thanks, man. Hey, I'm sorry. Yep. Yes. Oh, good my name is Brian Moe. I'm the executive director with the Vermont Council on Rural Development. Thanks very much for having me tonight. Um, I saw on the agenda that I've got from 603 to 615, you've got quite a full agenda, so I'll be pretty succinct. I'll um, make sure I leave time for, uh, for questions. Thank you, Brian. So I wanted to um, do two things. I wanted to explain what our organization is, the Vermont Council on Rural Development, and then explain a little bit about this community visit process um, that we're hoping to undertake in Berlin at some point in the future. Um, the Vermont Council on Rural Development, it is an independent nonprofit organization. It's a neutral facilitator that works at the state level, but primarily at the community level. Um, our job is really to hear what communities want to see in their community and connect groups of residents to resources to make those projects happen. Um, our authorization comes from the Federal Farm Bill, um, and that allows us to have a board of directors that has um, within it officials at the kind of state, federal, local level, as well as um, philanthropists, private actors, um, nonprofit leaders. So it's a board that's helpful in bringing resources to bear on specific projects that communities have identified. Um, we're independent of the state and we're trying to work on that um, We only come to a community when we're invited. And um, so um, we've received an official letter from, from Vince and the town. Thank you. Um, and we wanted to come tonight to share a little bit about who we are and make sure you've got time to ask us questions. Um, the other thing I would say about my community Vermont Council on Rural Development is that when we come to a community, we don't have an agenda. You know, our assumption is that people in the community know far more than we do about the community and what it means. And so we come as neutral facilitators with a clear process, right? That's what we call this community visit process that I'll explain. And it's a process that has been refined over 25 years in 86 Vermont communities. So that's the Vermont Council on Rural Development. The community visit process, um, and again, I'll try and keep this the same to leave time for questions, is a process that effectively is helping generate ideas within the community from a large number of people across that community. And we um, run a series of meetings. Oh, excuse me. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Good to go? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Someone's lost. <laughs> uh, so for us, the goal of the community visit process is to end with two or three clear projects that have been identified by the community and task forces of residents ready to implement those projects. Every community is different, but we've seen, for example, housing projects come out of St. Johnsbury. We saw a new chapter center get built in Craftsbury. We've seen downtown investments um, in uh, Johnson um, and all kinds of different projects. Again, it's, it's a function of what the community wants to see, and every community is really different. Um, important thing for this meeting. The process is really not about what should the select board do. It's about bringing new capacity forward to support in a complementary way what is already happening in the community. Um, and, and we work really hard to make sure that it's not redundant to be put to what the planning commission or select board are already doing. The process is the, the kind of last piece I'll lay out. The process is basically four steps. Um, you know, the first step, after we've been invited to a community and we've set a time, I'm joined with the select board of when we would arrive, we set up a steering committee of about 10 or 15 people. That group has two roles. One is decide what are the four areas that the community would like to talk about, broad areas. So not, you know, the pothole on Main Street, but roads and infrastructure. And that pothole on Main Street will come up in conversation, right? But kind of set up those four broad areas that the community would like to discuss and help us with some of the initial outreach. Um, the second meeting, the first major community meeting, what we call step one, we try to make sure that everybody in Berlin hears from us at least five times um, in a way that's not overly annoying about this meeting. We try and bring out as many people as we possibly can to that discussion to engage those four issue areas. What are people's challenges? What are their opportunities? What are their ideas for action? Um, 
just to give you a kind of example, we just finished our work in Concord, Vermont, up in Essex County. It's a town of about a thousand people. It's an off, it's just a, a great community. About a hundred people out of that thousand showed up for that first meeting. So you get a good percentage of people from the community um, wanting to share their ideas and their um, their vision for the future of that town. We do a lot of work after that first meeting, figuring out what are the patterns what we heard in the community, and we come back for a second meeting, second major community meeting about a month later. We put up on the wall of wherever we're, we're working and meeting with folks the 20 or 25 ideas that occurred across those different forums. And we ask the community to vote on those ideas. We get it down to two or three specific projects. And then we return one last time um, with a group of folks we call the resource team. These are philanthropists, state funders, nonprofit leaders, folks from other communities that have done a similar project to what Berlin elects to do. And we build those task forces in that final meeting with access to all these different resource providers. We want to people off to a good start. Um, you know, like I said, it takes time, and every community is different. But we've seen a lot of success over the years in, in different communities. The last things to say are, um, well, I guess there's three last things to say. One is it's a timely moment to be doing this kind of process. There's a lot happening in, in Berlin, um, and there's also, you know, it's a time where the federal government is a little bit more um, forward leading than at times in the past. Um, whether for good or ill, there's there's additional resources available. Um, two, there's a long line. There's a number of communities that are trying to engage with us, and so. Um, part of my job is happens to me to go back and see what makes sense from, from Berlin's perspective about when to engage. Um, and the last thing is, we cover the cost of this engagement. It's about $40,000 all told, a lot of it is on the outreach side, with two exceptions. Um, one is, we ask the select board to pay for a dinner, that first community dinner, and for a town mailing. Those are the two expenses that we ask for, and that's, um, frankly, that's from experience. We want to make sure the town is invested uh, in the community as well. Uh, we cover almost all the costs associated with the uh, with community visit. So with that, I'll stop talking. I'm um, ready to take any questions. Brad? Uh, yeah. I just uh, want to clarify that select board, uh, the planning commission's budget will be, will take care of those. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> any questions? I don't have any questions at this time, but it's very interesting, and I am favor of it. I think it would be beneficial. You explained it very well. Thank you. Um, I just want to add that I think it's the, the most exciting thing for me about this, I think, is actually trying to get more residents involved in the community. And I think, you know, their outreach, pro, their outreach will, you know, hopefully, hopefully cause a lot of people to come. And from, from what we heard, it actually got a lot more people involved in town affairs. So I think um, that's a really good outcome, if, if, even if that's what happens, because you know we, we have trouble getting people on committees, and you know we have had some younger people interested, but I'm hoping this will really solidify that and get more people involved. And the second thing I, I'd like to say is that you know this is exciting for the planning commission because we've been really focused on the town center, and I think we want to see what else people you know are interested in and, and think the Ber that Berlin needs. So I think this is very exciting, and I really hope we can get. High up on the list. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a meeting October 17th at the Grange. Would that 20th. be something that we would think about doing in conjunction with this well, I, or no, the standalone? I just made a note to speak to Carla about maybe having some information there and having yeah. one of the topics to talk with the residents that do come to that meeting. Yes. Okay. To obviously get the word out. That's well, first one of we the have opportunities. To, sorry, first we have to be chosen, I think. Right. But yeah. just to explain yes. what yes. it is okay. that we're, we're looking at as well. We're so good we have to be chosen. Well, of course. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine not being chosen. I think the question would be timing. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's the challenge. Is there's a number of communities that have put in requests. Our board is going to make a decision next week, and so I can serve. Oh, back. okay. Oh, good. Um, with Better. a little bit more sense of timing. Good. Um, you know, probably in the next month or so. I think the timing is vital for us, and I'm excited as, you know, you mentioned, Carla. I'm excited to hear the outcome. I think we would love to work here if some of you folks um, want to see. And is there anything about the timing we should take back to our board? And the sooner the better is the general principle, or is there something different? Mm -hmm. I think well, get it the, the sooner the better, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 We, we got a lot going on, and um, it would be great to, to really start to get some input from, from the residents where we should be focusing and making priorities. And if I could add to it, Brad, it's, 
there's, there is a tremendous amount of momentum in Berlin right now. We just want to keep that momentum going, right? So I, I, I would always advocate for sooner than, than later. And I think there's a tremendous amount of enthusiasm from the residents in the town, and not all of them can attend each of the meetings, or many, but I think this will be something to drive that forward. So we certainly would you know, welcome any and all who can come here. This is exciting. COVID has made virtual attendance Pretty, pretty possible right now. Is there going to be a virtual aspect, or do you incorporate a virtual aspect to your mm -hmm. community meetings? Yes, and there's some, like, the, I want to use nuance to it quickly. Uh, one is, for that first major community meeting, we have very easy, you know, easy to set up a Zoom session so people can kind of just come on for an hour, hour and a half, and share their thoughts across those four issue areas. Um, for other meetings, it gets more complicated. We've done it, but it can be quite challenging in the sense of, if you're trying to take a vote, um, it can be challenging to kind of get the Zooming folks in tune with what's happening in the room. Um, and then in that final meeting, you're broken into three separate task forces. That's where Zoom really struggles to kind of, you know, how do you know where, how to engage. Um, so there are, you know, it's easy at the beginning, it gets harder as we go. Um, we've done all options in all different communities. And so it's something we can back to you all um, with for some guidance about what's the best way to do it. Um, it's also only possible where there's an organization like Orca Media uh, able to help and support those things. They've helped us in other communities as well. Uh, and that makes the Zoom concept possible. Other questions? Comments? Do you have any other questions for us? I do not. I just wanted to add as well, being a, a relatively new member of the Berlin community, I'm really excited there's an opportunity to have greater discussions too. We've been working really hard. I'm a member of the, the Planning Commission. We work really hard on the town center, but it, I think it's really great to broaden that. And as was already mentioned, get the ball, continue the ball and momentum rolling. So I know there were community discussions in the, the organizing of the town center. I think it's really great that we're adding more um, community voice into future projects as well. And not only having it, not having it stop just on the town center. Any other comments? Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. I hope it was clear. I it really well. Uh, Capital Fire <laughs> Mutual <laughs> Aid <laughs> Radio Presentation. Hey, thanks for Thank you. Joe, I don't see anyone here. Joe was supposed to be here. It's not online either. So. <clears throat> well, if we can on, we'll swing back to this. Um, anything uh, on this, Vince? Uh, which one? Uh, the capital. No, uh, uh, Joe was supposed to be here to uh, to present that, Mr. Aldworth, and uh, I've got I've got nothing. Okay, so we'll take and put it on the agenda. If you yep. show up, we'll put it on the agenda. For so I'll, I'll reach out after this and uh, try to reschedule. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Route 302 sewer line. <laughs> I'm Joe Luzzi. Uh, you had 290 or uh, House 292 there on the Bear Montpelier Road. And last week we went to uh, Public Works or Sewer Commission. <coughs> And you guys are going to kick around and see what you want to do for fixing it because it's still leaking on the road. The problem here is is ownership of the line, if I understand it right. Everything that I sent in on that board meeting, the last couple of them that they've had, and everything that has been reviewed by Tom, I've reviewed a lot of stuff myself personally. Prior to 1965, it clearly shows that those were. Uh, when the interceptor was put in, that those were privately owned septics that went into the river. In 65, the town put in uh, an interceptor that some of those were connected into, and, 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 and but it, they still, the main line going into the town interceptor was owned by the residents there. Uh, everything I've looked at clearly shows that. Uh, 
the issue is Mr. Luzzi's been without sewer for a year and a half, going on two years. And now we're having uh, wastewater starting to pop up in front of... Uh, well, actually, it's in front of his house. Is it's that, running down to your DI in front of her house. Yeah. Coming on top of the ground. I know Tom at the state was looking into it, and that's the last, that's as far as I know, personally. There's no easements recorded for the town to work in that. Uh, talking to people that had a little more information about Route 302 and Barry Montpelier Road at that time, since when those lines and houses were built, that road wasn't that wide. They since widened it, and now that falls within the state right away, uh, those lines. So, uh, so there'd have to be some recorded easements to be able to work on it. I know that uh, Tom, we had, at the last meeting, they suggested that the Public Works Board took on a percentage of the, co the cost, the town, and the landowners. Not having a fixed cost as of yet, uh, it's kind of hard to throw out a percentage-wise for people because they don't know how much the money is. My suggestion was going to be tonight, and I was willing to make a motion to have Vince apply for some grants and what we could achieve in those grants. And then after that point, uh, Tom doing his work, coming up with a number, then we have some real numbers to work with. Problem is, in the meantime, Mr. Luzzi's gonna, he's still without, he, there's nothing he can do with this property. There's no sewer there, and now we're having an environmental issue with the, with the septic that's well, that's pretty much coming stopped. top of that. It has stopped. Yeah. So that's that's what I know about it, where we're at. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Nelson Hyper, uh, with the area at 308. Uh, now, Joe, if I understand correctly, I mean, I'm kind of coming in here late on this thing without the maps and everything. But from what I understand, that there's three homes, yours, uh, yeah, 270 around. The next one next to you, yeah. which is number what? I think that's two. Uh, Two seventy four. Your two ninety two. Uh, two fifty five. And two twenty three. Those three are all hooked to the same line. Right? Yeah. Two two twenty eight. Two. Uh, no, that's two fifty six. Two twenty eight line. Okay. So those three homes are all hooked together. Correct. And they come. They come on the lawns, out of, out of the road, yeah, and they right connect here. right here, and then there's a six inch lot that goes across to the main. Correct. Is that about right? Yeah. So, and really, you're saying right in here in the lawn, there's a broken... Yeah, back here. Okay, uh, broken in here, which yeah. is more or less making it all, all three of these back up to here. That's right. Where you yeah. put a clean out there. Yeah, in front of mine. Yeah, yeah. that's right. So, I guess where I'm coming from, she's at 308. And when we put a new SDR 35 pipe uh, from that house when she purchased it, yeah, I had the Burko whole stuff. And when we got out to the town right away, from there to the main it was all nice to move in the last 30 years SDR 35 pipe, which was nice. So she has a direct lateral right to the main. She shouldn't even be involved in this. I think the fix over here is bottom line. You, you said you were looking at maybe going down there, finding where that's broke and fixing it. Oh, we know where it is already. So yeah. why not yeah. just fix that on the lawn and fix it? It's not in the road. It's before it goes here with the six inch to the main. Mm -hmm. Well, whose line is it? Is it the town's? Is all, there's nothing in my No, no, no. Anything outside that right away would be you, you three responsibility to fix that. Possible. I mean, I'm getting a little confused here with what you're calling private line and what you're not. I mean, are you calling the whole main line coming up Bear Mount Bay Road a private line? Uh, in 1965, the town did an intercepted line on this side of the road where they tied these units in. Prior to 65, the map of 65 shows those who were existing 
privately owned lines. Well, this piece right here was part of facets. And that house was moved off facets where the bakery sets to here. At that time, that was all put in new on 308. This shouldn't even be involved with this situation here. Okay? Uh, we had Hardigans do a camera here when we put this other end to make sure that going to the main was in good shape. And it's 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 nice SDR 35 pipe. It's 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 in good shape. Uh, and it looked it looked like when they came up through here, they came right to the right away line. They hooked onto the old Burko, right yeah, there. Yeah. And and of course we replaced that. That you know, was of course the problem. Uh, I, I guess um, when they're talking fixing a private line, are they, they're talking fixing this line right here for these three houses? Are they talking yeah. replacing the whole main? I mean, I, I mean, we don't have enough information. The, the only issue that I understand right now, this, this line that was 65 has all been maintained. Yeah. The only issue that I That's understand right is these three houses yeah. here and then possibly Another there's two one. other ones that tie in that, come to here that are all cent. private, correct. Now That's this six-inch pipe, there. there's a manhole right here. Correct. So you can right see right. the six-inch pipe. Um, there's a manhole on the other side. Is there is one here also. There is on the so you side. have a pretty good system there. Um, I mean, are you thinking of replacing from here to here or just? No, just the, I, I just believe Tom, it's spot. just this, this here and it's not, it, like I said, it's not the town. It's, it's all it's, private it's, property. It's all private property. So these so, properties right here need to turn around. I mean, first of all, all that stuff you did, that had just gone right straight from your basement house and bought a new SDR 35 pipe over here and abandoned whatever was in there. 300 feet. 300 feet. Yeah. I mean, it's in, <laughs> it's in the state right away from me to get a big permit here. In no, the I mean, you, know, you know it, Joe, you know where your wall is. Yeah. Don't go there. Come back up here where it's on and come over. And then if you wouldn't be disturbing any of that, it would be relatively reasonable to come over. Yeah. I don't know what the situation on these other two houses are. But but get that fine. down that to down? where this manhole is, and that solves your problem. Yeah, who's the expense? Well, it's, it's, it's private problem. Who's, who's line is it? <laughs> who's line is it? No, no. That's the rule the, of thumb is question. anything outside the town right away, it belongs to, it belongs to the homeowner. Yeah. The town or inside the town right away, it belongs to the sewer department. Well, isn't it inside the right of way? I think it their line. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, Mike, because I'm just coming into this right here. Or whatever it is. I don't get. I went up and get maps, but you couldn't bring it up on his computer. They said the map showed it. I thought that it was in the right of way. No, and we well, don't have anything in the right of ways. It, it, it is expanded. Excuse me. So Vince had legal counsel opinion on this and legal. Vince, can you speak to this? Yeah. Uh, again, from, from the town perspective, we had him validate that. And again, to what Dave said, explained earlier, is exactly pretty much in line with what the attorney said, that there's no clear ownership of the town of that line. Um, of which line are we talking about? The, the one that's failed. The one that's up on their property? The right. one that runs okay. that's in, all the, I want in to the state play. right away. From the, um, from the manhole up. Has anyone checked the state right away? Uh, the, the state has looked at that. You mean where yeah. it ends? Well, I know where, where it ends in front of her property. State right away what, in that what, location. Uh, <coughs> it's the highway 50, department. And they can, yeah, 25 they can feet, I think, from the center line of the road. Well, it's it, not always that. Not always. It's it's on on but, uh, but on my yeah, survey it's map, right. it's pretty much, you know, where, where the curbing is? It jumps back. Well, you know where your big maple tree is? Mm -hmm. It's right forward of that. So that, I mean, if that pipe's here, then yes, it would be in the town right away. Where you got the little orange stuff? That's, yeah, that's in the road. That would be in the town right away. Correct. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know anymore. <laughs> now, this is off 302, but it would be the state right away. State, state, state right away. Yeah. Yeah. But as far as her place 302, Right. It goes direct right to the manhole with, the a, with a new new thing. So I mean, she's pretty much should be taken off this situation. But, yeah, Tom. So I, I, the the thought process with the public's work board is to 
upgrade all those lines down there to, to sta town standard, right? I think some of it's a, a two inch, three inch. Uh, and so that was the thought process because if this is happening today, it's going to happen 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Uh, Mary, is that correct? I'm sorry. Yeah. Ma Mary has a private line going underneath 302. If that fails, the cost to do that repair is astronomical. So the, again, it was just a thought process is to, it, it, instead of just fixing a, 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 an issue today that Mr. Luzzi has, <gasps> let's talk about fixing the whole neighborhood and let the, and that, if that if, if money were no issue, the public support board would go in and do that, then take ownership of that line. So so these folks and residents yeah, yeah. would not have to worry about that into the future. That's that's what was the that's what the public support board if, if is has discussed. So this one section of line that you're talking about that is on private. Is it on private property? Yeah. As you far as know. we know, yes. Yeah. You don't know. No. You don't know that. Well, well, I mean, the end result is that <coughs> nobody's gone there with cameras. Nobody's come up with a map. Uh, there's, you know, I, I'm sure when the state came through there, I mean, uh, they upgraded uh, and did shots and elevations and everything else with AOT and everything else when they come up through that main road. Uh, there, there should be a lot of information, and I think what's happening right now, a lot of people are uh, saying stuff without having the information. And so, for instance, for instance, her pipe, that was all nice SDR 35 pipe put in the last 30, 40 years. I mean, uh, the main line, I don't know. If you want to know the condition of it, you should have a camera. And you know what I mean? Uh, I'm sure it's fine. <clears throat> Uh, I believe what's happening right now is an issue no different than anywhere's that you have private their sewer pipe coming down and it's not in the town right away to service there. The, the, you're saying the spot where that little orange is goes over here to the connect to the other ones? It goes down towards Barry. That's, That's what I'm saying. It connects the with the other two or three homes. And then goes across in the six inch to the manhole where that manhole is. Correct. The easiest thing to do is run a new sewer pipe right up through the grass direct to the home. I mean, that's, that's 300 feet. No, it's about 600 now, you've feet looked total. It. Okay. And he's put a camera on through it. Yeah, and what's it he, look like? Well, it's old pipe probably put in like they figure in 1945. Is it cast or that black Burko? Black Burko. Yeah, yeah, pipe. that's what and, they use. And all the, time. Uh, the only one that's being affected right now is a Luzi. The, yeah, yeah. the house to the, on the very side of a Luzi's is connected directly across, across 302, like yours is. And the next why is, two. Why is, why is this one getting affected? It isn't getting affected. Okay. And then the next two houses towards Barry are connected beyond the the uh, bad spot. The, the oh, I see. But what's what, are you calling the bad spot part of the main or? Well, it's part of this line that nobody seems to know who owns. I guess. Well, I it don't know about to, I don't know about that. I mean, well, the bottom line is when 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 the old sewer plant was bitted off, which I ended up winning and you had to turn around and put your pump station in down by further down, basically that was to hook on Montpelier's pipes that went down through the main so that they could, uh, they could read the flow and get some type of charge. Well, when that happened, all the, all the pipes coming up through in your right away became yours. Unless there was some agreement or something which it doesn't seem to be. And, and by, by that happening, you took over whatever was in the town right away responsibility. You're not responsible for what's out of the town right away. And, and you know, I mean, there, there are grants from rural development. You could go down and apply for it. Right now, if you hurry up before the 31st, I'd be more than happy to help you. They have money through, uh, uh, this funding, yeah, 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 they have funding for sewer, and they would probably pay for that whole installation for you. 
I mean, this seems to be the more feasible way to go about this. I mean, you. I mean, what I'm hearing is you guys are talking about 25% town paying, 25% the sewer paying, 50% eight people paying, which couldn't turn into a $2.5 million job. Yeah. I mean, where we look, look a little common sense here when we only got a one problem issue that needs a new pipe from the house down to the manhole. Is the town hiring an engineer to design this? Did, I don't think we're quite that far along the process. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know if we should be. It's been seven months. Well, seven months because that pipe is broke outside that manhole someplace. It's put in 1945. It needs a new four-inch sewer pipe to each house question on that is, manhole. Whose is it? That's the big question. And it's probably the towns from going back to the no records anywhere. The rule of thumb from the time when there was no and sewer plants the in sewer the 60s plant. to the time that they put sewer plants in, the time that Berlin outgrew theirs and went with Montpelier, is pretty much everything in the right of way the town owns. Everything outside it, the private people. Oh. We could speculate about ownership all night. The, 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 the clear definitive um, support that the town has is the legal counsel has looked at the drawings, looked at all the, 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 the documents, and in his opinion, said it is privately owned. Which, which part are we talking about, Tom? The, the piece that the old, that we're talking about. The piece all of is it. in front of his house. Yes. No, that no. goes back. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually the three, the line that runs parallel, the three the road right. that comes Coming into back the toward the right. Yeah, as is, what I, that's what as, as is, is your sister-in-law's crossing 302. Well, her as is, as, direct as, level as, right but, to but the that's, main. But that's, again, that's also her ownership. Just, just, and as that isn't these, her ownership inside of 302. Sorry. Every town, every city, every place. There, unless there's some written agreement inside the right of way of that road, that's like saying you gotta, you're gonna have to replace you eight people gonna have to place the main down all the way down through. That's that's part of theirs too, or is it just the laterals? Just you the, talk just the laterals. So from that main to the outside of that road, even though it's in the town right of road, you're saying she has to repair. That's her lateral. Is that the way it is in all the town? I don't care. I don't know. Well, there I'm you go. Just, you don't. I'm just saying what the town of Berlin's attorney has told us. First of all, where are all these maps? I mean, we need more information. <coughs> That's the problem. We got a lot of people saying a lot of things, but no information, and and all that information is out there. It, it you know, and uh, if it isn't, the first thing that should be to get. Hardigans, whatever, with a camera and find out what it is and what condition your main is and what, et cetera. I mean, that seems. No. The Public Work Board cleans the Route 302 main every year. And what do they we, think we, the condition we, we, of that? We know what condition our main is in. How is it? It's in excellent condition. Okay, that's great. So and now I, you're talking just a lot of. Uh, excuse me. Uh, Tom, that's uh, from. I'm looking at the map from it's from the it's from the very line all the way Carl, from the very very line all the way down to uh, the Montpelier line the pro, the town lines from the very town line. So. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> you, you, you know opinions, and you know what everybody's got. One. And they jet that camera. We we don't camera it, but we do jet it. Jet it. Well, that's so, good. So you know your name's good. So the line is clear. Correct. Yeah, we 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 do that that main line every year, Route 302. Uh, let me let me ask you this, Tom. What? If she's on her separate lateral from all these other properties and it goes straight across and it's all nice modern SDR 35, why would she replace it? I, all I'm saying is that 
eventually that will fail. Well, everything fails eventually. Okay, but uh, we so, die. so 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 the the Mr. Luzies of today is going to be somebody 30 years from now coming to the town and saying, "Town, that's yours," and and the town is saying it's not. So what we're suggesting is that 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 uh, 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 that line. Uh, be replaced, the town standards, those laterals go away, and then the town takes over the maintenance uh, and ownership of that line. Well, That's what's been suggested. Yeah, let me ask you a question, Tom. What, what exactly line are you talking about? Are you talking about on the side of the road, all of them coming back to where that manhole is? Yes. Yeah. And. So let me let me just make a suggestion because we're going through the same thing that we went through with the public works board meeting. Again, it comes back to the bone of contention is ownership of the line, right? So with the select board's approval, I will contact our attorney and I will have him do another research and document clearly the findings, what he finds on ownership of that line. We'll inform our public works board and we'll inform all the landowners in writing officially of what the ownership of that line is once it's clearly defined and determined. Again, he's, he's been can, through it I make once. One thing, yeah, and, and then after that, what the Public Works Board was trying to do, we can put back on the table, which is a simple question in my mind. If we have clear ownership and it's a private line, number one, let's go with that assumption first. If it's a private line, the Public Works Board brought it to the select board, they're willing to participate with the landowners to bring that line up to standards and have all those laterals connect to, at, at that point, a town-owned line. So the question to the residents will be, do they want that or not, the town participation, or do they want to continue to own them privately and take care of it? Simple question. That's if it comes back private. If it comes back to the town owns the line, and that's a whole different story at that point, then the town and the public works board will need to engage and come up with a proposal to the residents on what we're going to do to fix that line. I think it's it's those two options, all based on clearly documented ownership of the line. With the board's approval, I'll proceed with that and get that determination. In, in the, uh, well, I would like, this is going to take time. There's money out there. I would like to make a motion that we go with Vince to seek out these grants in the meantime for the replacement of that line, regardless of which way it goes. If it's a privately owned line, and the grants come back in a certain amount of money, then at that point, we can speak with the Public Works Board and the owners, and we have some real numbers in the meantime to go. If we sit back and wait for this ownership thing to come back, yeah. some of these grants that may be available now may not be available later. But yes, you can't apply for a grant, Mr. Grant, you don't know. 308 doesn't want to be involved with this line. We're not on this line. We have our separate, no different than facet, no different than the bowling alley or any of the rest of them. We have one four inch line that goes to the main. We're not hooked onto this three, four, five line back this way. We shouldn't even be involved with this. Unless they're going all the way down the whole Barry Montfair Road and hooking it all on one side. Because that's what they're proposing to do is bring all these four or five houses the one spot where that six inch goes across and hook it in. All right, so if I may, I think we have your, your uh, how you feel about it pretty clear. I think if we do end up putting a universal line down the north side of 302, then we put a stipulation that if anything happens to that lateral line, it's, it's the landowner's res responsibility henceforth. And that will keep you from having to pay anything for the new and improved line, which is excellent. It is going to be, you know, top quality. And it will keep the town from being liable for anything that happens in the future in the line that you want to defend. That works for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you got you guys back there. Yeah, so we're on, uh, I'm at 162, which is the other end of the area we're discussing. And my father lives next door at 190. So we have a shared line going straight to the uh, manhole. Uh, next door to to, to their house. Um, we don't have any issues right now, but we were being lumped in as a proposal to being directly connected, just like straight down the driveways to this new uh, town maintained line. 
Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to that idea because, you know, if we end up having a situation um, like Mr. Luzi's having, you know, I would have to either dig up a hole in his yard if he still owns that house or currently next door to them, there's a house that's for sale. So there's nobody even living there. And that is where the line runs through to the to the manhole. So I, I would certainly be interested in knowing more information when it comes time to discuss that. But, you know, it really depends on the cost because even sharing the cost amongst, you know, multiple houses um, over a long period of time or whatever, I'd still be responsible for putting a new line from my house down to that new town maintained line, which is not an insignificant cost. Um, but again, I do like that idea of having that kind of peace of mind going forward. Dave. Can I have a second on Dave's motion? So second. Okay, now we can get into more discussion. <laughs> I could just add that the, sure, yeah. the, the grants that I know are available are only for municipally owned assets, not for privately owned assets. There may be ARPA funds, as somebody yeah. mentioned, or Mr. Aluzzi may be able to apply to for to, that, to that do that. being said, in this motion, and I should probably should clarify it, that if it's going to be a town owned line, okay. that's why okay. I wanted okay. to okay. think, okay. and also that the landowners affected that take care of the recording costs of any easements for the town because they're not there's none currently in place and i don't think that'd be the town responsibility i think that personally they should you know take care of the recording costs of any easements and stuff that's needed so that that line could be constructed yeah justin i just i missed that maybe in the motion or didn't hear it uh, that's just talking to me. Uh, uh, did your motion include just putting it out to RFP and seeing um, what it would cost since it's been sitting on the it's table? It's something that so needs to, we need to do to get the, the fixed cost because to ask somebody to participate in a 50% or a 25% uh, 25% of what? Yeah. That's, that's, that's an easy right. way, to, easy more easy way to do it. We have to have those, those numbers. Anything else on this? Yeah, Tom. So at the last Public Work Board meeting, it was discussed that the Public Work uh, apply for a grant to do the uh, look at doing the planning and final design on this. Public Work Board agreed to that, um, and that application has gone into the state for their review to, uh, with the with the caveat that um, uh, it would, if it comes to fruition, it'd be municipally owned. So, uh, but to get a, a definitive cost, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do do the design, and then go to bid, right? And so, that is some time out. Uh, so, again, I, I we we've got a we've we have we have an, uh, 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 a professional engineer's uh, uh, an opinion on what the cost would be. It's it's roughly one hundred fifty thousand dollars is is what. You know, these, these these are professionals. They they, they know uh, uh, what stuff costs, and, and so that that's the of uh, 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 the guesstimate right now that all in cost is one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now, as I understand it, there's some uh, uh, water coming to the surface now. Correct. That's pretty well stopped. It's stopped. Yeah, it's been stopped for four or five days. What was the cause of that? Well, I think what it is, is down here in front of Joe's, they have a plane out there. So what's happening is the three, four houses that are back here that all come together before it comes across into the main, there's a broken pipe right back here. So what's happening is in the ground, that, that got backed up to that plane out and started going over. Oh. I think what's happened is the people have slowed up everything, so it stopped. It only did it. It only did it like bad, like one or two days, and then it was, yeah. Well, I, as, as I understand, the state's gotten involved already. Oh, they probably have, you know. But uh, uh, it, it, it's as simple as going and fixing that one pipe right now. Well, it, it's broken down here. That doesn't mean that you can't address 
the long-term effects of it. But right now, what the feasible thing to do is go over here and fix this one broken pipe. See, the town, on my understanding and the feelings, from the way I understand it to be, is the town don't want to get involved trying to fix that when we do not believe it's not on your it's land. not on our land, number one. And number two, when you start messing with that older pipe, now we start causing problems for these other landowners well, it's uh, as well. I yeah, just, what I'm saying is it's not on your thing. Correct. The rule of thumb in every town and city that I've ever worked on sewer yeah. in, whatever's in the right of way right. belongs to the town. Whatever's outside that belongs to the landowner. It's up to the landowner to fix it. If they got to put a 300, 400, 600 foot sewer pipe to the house, it is what it is. Uh, and I can set you up with that. I mean, I do this all the time. They have it right now. If you get it in before the 31st, and they may have an extension for that, free money. Well, we can give we'll it a see. shot. We'll see. It's but better, meantime, than, better than the lottery. In the meantime, I got no sewer. Well, if you haven't had it for a long time. Yeah. Anything, anything else on this? Those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Marty Kong. I want to say something, but I don't know what it is. Um, if, the, if it's just that one line that's on a private in, individual's land, how do you get them to fix it? Well, that's where the state comes in. If it's half surface, it's not surface. And I don't think I don't think it's at the level where they came down, and looked at it. It, it, it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's pretty well stocked. Yeah. I mean, and the fact if you've got a plan to fix it, then chances are, you know, they've been pretty reasonable. Um, just so everybody knows, Joe's got to get it. We, it, we've had it, a permit from the highway department to dig inside the highway department's right away. Yep. And we have to renew that in order to go fix the sewer line. So is, is it so an it's issue right away? It's in the state right away. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's, or we wouldn't need a permit. Okay. I mean, I don't know, because you know what I mean? Uh, we couldn't come up with the maps. We couldn't come up with, you know. We'll go to the highway department and get the right-of-way maps, and then we'll know where it is. That's what we should do. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. But I don't know why we need a permit if it's on private property. And you want if it's broke on private property. But if it's broke on the town side, which the only way to, the only way to prove that, you know, Hardigan's camera. Well, we and then. That. We've okay, so you found the break and it's in the town right away. Well, we know about where the break is. Okay. We're not exactly okay. well, have it pinpointed, but um, I, again, I don't know why we would need a highway department agency of transportation permit to dig in their right of way if it wasn't in their right of way. I would not take that faith that this gentleman saying that if it's in a, a, a municipal or state highway right away that it's that it becomes ownership of the town. No, I don't take that as gospel. No, I'm not yeah. saying that. Okay. I'm just saying he has to get a permit well, from the agency. I think what we're discussing right now. The other thing from 45 to 65 that road expanded and the right away has moved. Well, they, they, so, they did. You correct. Know, they, it, we don't it know changed that. from. Uh, so just be, that that lateral that you guys are privately owned whether it's in the right of way or not, it depends on how far. But the first thing, is pretty much, so. if, if, if you're in the grass area, out, you're probably outside the, the right of way. Unless you're in that place where it curved and it used to have the old post and the old white post down there. A lot of it's within the pavement. Yeah. So. So I mean, we'll find out. We'll, we'll yeah. go to the agency. Go to the AOA. They'll come out and mark it. Well, they'll at least give us the maps, yeah. or the most current maps yeah. that they have. Well, you know. For the right of way. You know. Then we'll know. And find out if that's where the break is and what the deal is. I mean, that's kind of <coughs> the prudent thing here to do 
to find out exactly Are where it's broken. Are you insinuating that we're not cool? No. <laughs> I'm not insinuating nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else on this? If not, we've got to move on. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Highland Avenue. Mr. Newton is with us tonight. Good evening. Good evening. I have a drink at it. No. I have yeah. also some of the other oh, light workers oh, getting a big safe uh, ticket for location yeah. utilities that are buried you from hole three. I apologize for the crudeness of this, but the proposed uh, section to cross again. Island Avenue in front of number 84 uh, is in the gravel portion of the road. will not require uh, asphalt cut or restoration of the asphalt. Uh, I've also talked with Mr. Hedges. Um, this is an, in an effort to separate the water system between 72 and 84. In times past, when I was a much younger man, both 72 and 84 were served by the older system that was on the east side of Highland Avenue. After numerous, I can't even tell you how many times my father complained about it, low water pressure with that. My father put in a drilled well and my grandmother, my father's mother, was living in 84. So they designed it so that both would be fed off the same water supply, not system. In an effort to sell the properties following the death of my mother, my oldest brother, my youngest brother, it has been suggested that the easiest remedy to the situation to separate the water supply is to reconnect number 84 to the new water line that is now on the west side, requiring us to cross Highland Avenue. That's the town water line. Pink Crystal Springs, I believe, right? Yes. Okay, just yes. Crystal Springs. Well, I, that I think what the name it is the town of Berlin Water oh, Company or something. No, it is Berlin Water Company. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. which has nothing at all to do with town of Berlin. Town of Berlin. Town of Berlin. Okay. Yeah. But just to clarify that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Used to be <laughs> Crystal Springs. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't still owned by Hedges. Okay. Yeah. Uh, again, if you want to take a look at this rough drawing that I have, I, I, I'd like to get a copy because I haven't had our, our road guy look at it yet. So okay. I think the cast is I'll just take a quick copy. Yeah. Thank you. If you can't read my hen scratching, oh no, if there's any questions, it's good so, compared so to so Dean, Dean doing the work. Is that? I, it, I'm not no. sure on that. It, it will be done by a licensed insured contractor that will provide one way traffic. Um, I also understand in the permit that if there is any disruption of traffic, then I need to contact the local police department and the road foreman. 24 hours prior to, um, you have to provide uh, traffic control, if you will, um, and to have it delineated where they are to drive if it's a one lane. And uh, if there's a one lane situation. Would you like to see? I'll have a copy oh. um, a motion on this? I'd make a motion to approve the permit uh, with the condition that uh, um, our road foreman checks the as it's going back together. You know, the top surface yes. that is compacted and everything. Yeah, I understand that it needs to be compacted every six inch six layers. Six lift, yeah. yeah. Or lift, I'm sorry. I Use the right motion. terminology. <laughs> Okay, uh, any idea who's, who your contractor is going to be? Uh, Hedges says that he utilizes Dubois, and I thought I would contact them my own self 
Unfortunately, I'm leaving tomorrow. We'll be out of town for like five days on business, and I will be back to try to conduct that. And prior to this evening's meeting, I had a meeting with a radon mitigation specialist because we had a 6.9 reading in number 72, and it can only be a four or lower. So we're working on that aspect of it as well. But it'd be a licensed contract. Yeah, oh, yeah, license and insurance. That's it, yeah. I, okay. I worked for a public utility for 37 and a half years. I know what it's like to work in the road. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm not going out there with my wife in a flat blade <laughs> shovel. <laughs> <laughs> and she'd be very pleased to hear that. So. <laughs> okay, anything else on this? If, if, and if there are any questions that come up with the rough sketch that I have here. Yeah. Okay. I, I did take some measurements um, of, of where the asphalt ends um, and to the nearest phone pole, which is in the front yard of 84. And there's approximately over 21 feet of gravel between the end of the asphalt and where the proposed cut is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. You have your permit. It needs to be signed, and there's something yep. about a. I'll, I'll get you a signed copy, and we'll, Tom and I'll be in touch with you tomorrow on that. Okay, um, I'll be home probably till about 9 a.m. Okay, first thing in the morning. If you haven't heard from me by 8:55, call me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We'll, we'll have that taken care of. We'll get it. And the, <clears throat> the proposed site has three wooden stakes across the front lawn with the white paint per. Dick safe, and I, the permit number is on your copy there as well. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And thank you very much for your thank time. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Uh, discussion with the Historical Society on office space and building. Yes, Sorry. I believe we have them online via Zoom. Should I get a Yeah, you're good. Thank you. Good evening. Um, this is, I'm Meredith Dodge, and I'll be, um, I'm here for the Historical Society. We had short notice, so we don't have any other folks here tonight. So um, <coughs> it's good to hear, hear your concerns. Um, also, there was one, there were three agenda items that Vince had sent to me, and one of them has to do with security, and I had requested that that might be more appropriate to discuss that in executive session? Uh, I'm not seeing the uh, statute on that one. I, that well, we had some concerns that there was some information from, you know, that, that we discussed at the last uh, meeting a month ago that put put out there the, the method of access and, and how people could access the office and made its way into the paper. So we're just concerned that some of it may be sensitive. That's all. Uh, I don't think it'll, it'll, it would stand up to the uh, Littner's test for uh, uh, executive session. Um, okay. uh, then I might just be careful how we yep. talk about this. Okay. On the uh, <coughs> on the uh, you, you've got the letter from the attorney and then uh, several questions to, to prompt the discussion with some of the concerns that were brought up. No, it's on the liability. Uh, yes, the um, uh, liability coverage, uh, as I understand it, <coughs> if something happens in here, our insurance will not cover the historical society. And it's our feeling that uh, you should probably look into getting your own insurance for contents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, Do you have something specific that you're referring to? So you said you have a, a lawyer, a letter from your lawyer? Uh, no, the, no, you want me to speak to it? Yeah, go ahead. Since I talked to him. So basically the concern is liability coverage. 
for you know for people coming and going from the office and also for the coverage of the contents within the office mm -hmm. right physical items as well um, those right. those are those are not currently covered uh, by the town policy um, so the recommendation is that do, well first the question is do you, do you have insurance on those and if not are you able to to get that because that's a that's a concern yeah the, we we never had any expectation that the the town was covering the contents um, and we've discussed it before it's actually been one of one of my issues um, and so we were in the process of discussing all that prior to prior to the covid kind of putting a damper on our thing our our discussions um, so we have no problem to look into our own liability uh, insurance. Um, is there anything specific the town is looking um, to to have us include as far as you, you since we're well, using common area? Well, I, I think probably the, the big thing with the town is more that uh, that uh, that you knew that if something happens to the building that your contents are not covered yes yes we've we've been well aware this there's, there's always been um you know one of our concerns is a lot of our things are irreplaceable so we've that's always been been an issue um, but as we've acquired a lot more um supporting um you know, office equipment and such. It's raised its head again, even just for us, you know, as far as, yes, we do have things that are replaceable. Um, so, so that's just been kind of an ongoing debate within ourselves, but that's for us to figure out. Um, but we have no problem to, to look into that and, um, you know, make you aware of, of you know, our, our coverage. Okay. Looking at this, uh, it looks like that uh, it's a suggestion by the attorney that they rewrite this uh, this lease agreement and to, to include a hold harmless provision to protect the town uh, and also the requirements of what insurance should be covered uh, in this new lease thing. And then looking at that uh, on the lease, I just I wanted to bring up that. I'm reading this that this this thing has been in effect since 2006, and there was a provision in there to uh, to raise at a, a, a cola rate, uh, which hasn't been done since then, to uh, do a little bit of a rent increase that should probably be discussed. Yes, that's yeah, that's um, you know we just require notification of the towns you know when when that. Um, goes into effect each year. So I can issue a letter if that's the case for what the current rate would be. Yeah, because I mean, we we really don't have, um, you know, a way of knowing unless you notify us, so. Yeah, no, for sure. We don't have a problem that, that that's a clause in there. Yeah. I just think it's simple things just been overlooked for it is. some time and, yeah. and, and probably should get it up to date with a new lease and uh, with the current current things and this requirement that, uh, you know, we, the town has a hold harmless, so that, you know, the building burnt that they didn't try to collect on our insurance or, or anything of that, that nature. Or if even one of their, their volunteers for the story got hurt, coming into the building, broke a leg or something that it's covered under their insurance and not the town's insurance. Diane, I got a question for you. How often do you calculate the COBA for town purposes? Well, it's really dependent on what the topic is. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, to, like just just to make, for instance. Okay. Well, I'm just trying to bring it into a, a schedule of some sort mm -hmm. instead of saying, well, we're going to do it every quarter. We're going to no, we're going to do it every mean, fiscal year. Yeah, at I think X. annually. Annually. Yeah. Okay. Because we, we charge them annually. We've never increased the rent from 2006. And I think that Vince worked up some numbers. Okay. To where yeah. it should be today. 
Well, I mean, are you talking about going back retroactively? No, 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 no. not at all. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, my understanding, my understanding is it, it would be an annual. Yeah. COLA is an annual increase. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah. I mean, we just have, you know, we, we typically pay, you know, in the, in the fourth quarter of the year. So. So Mer Meredith, I have a question. This is Joe Stop. Um, do you pay anything for like utilities or, or, services such as that so so the way the i don't know if you've seen the agreement we paid about uh, almost 20 percent of the cost of the renovations back in 2006 yeah uh, we had actually offered to pay more when the town was going to be spending more um and when the town's people uh, kept deferring this for a couple of years and reduced your budget um, reduced our a contribution as well. So we ended up paying, we paid about 20% of the cost for doing the renovations to the building. And so it was um, the, the 250 that we've been paying is to cover the, the cost of, um, of the, the different utilities. I would, I would presume it says an annual payment. So I'm I guess I'm reading into it, but Back the, to your point about the, that was the amount the contract, that was agreed right? on. That's why we yeah. Need to, yeah, I think that's why that yeah. we need to update this contract part. because I mean, as time has gone on, everybody knows all the you know the phone, utility, Wi-Fi, all that, and, and copier, all that is an added cost to the town. And this contract's really vague that I think we need to redo it, to re revisit it. I mean, the intentions, everything was. Everybody had good intentions, and here we are 14, 15, 17 years later, and uh, I, I think it's time that we redo this lease agreement. Yeah, and, we, and I can um, take it up with one of our members who um, was party to the original multi-year negotiations that took place, so I can get a little bit more background. Um, you know, not knowing what the concerns were, I have not spoken with him yet. Um, you know, needed to wait until he heard what what the town, um, what the town's concerns were. Yeah. Now, Vince, was there any? I know that there was some discussions. Is there is, was there some discussion about poss the possibilities of relocating them within the building? Is there anything? No, uh, we haven't got to those discussions yet. Is that still something down the line? At, at some point, right? We're, we're looking for space now. That's it. Right? To try to do it. Right? We're okay. renting space as we expand the staff right now. Yeah. Now, I know that, um, you know, the current agreement, well, I mean, we can, we can, we can talk about that. But I would just note that it does say a, very, a specific space. It's not any space, but a specific space. Um, well, I thought it was just a square footage of space. It's the specific five, 336 yeah, square feet. Yeah, it's given you guys 336 square feet within the It's a specific, it's a specific 336 square feet. Is that how it's you understand? Specifically that, specifically that room. I guess, I guess we got to look at the contract. I guess there's a little bit of disagreement in that, and I don't really, don't want to get into that at this point. I just think right. that now's the time to, you know, because we're, we're, we've got to added cost with, you know, yep. adding office space and everything else. So, yeah. 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 Like I think there's, there's, there's probably some work, some due diligence that, that we both need to do to understand the, the agreement that, and how it came to be. And, with the understanding that that thirty thousand dollars was to be used, you know, in consideration of. So, my understanding from the, the takeaway from this conversation is, at some point in the near future, um, when Meredith has done the homework on her side, we've done it on our side. I've done it on our side. Um, we'll set up another meeting with. The historical society for a specific contract agreement review in the near future so 
Tom Sewell. Sounds wise to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on this? I'd just like to throw in that I think. I guess, do you have any recollections? Because I, I guess you were a part, were you a party to those, those negotiations? I was on the board, but I wasn't part of the, uh, wasn't part of that uh, discussion. So I don't, I don't have any, any firsthand information on it. Okay. What was that? Yeah. We think it's been a great synergy um, over the years to to be able to provide that that uh, context, that historical context for you know for the town, the town's people, and and make make it accessible so that people are more likely to um, find and utilize our services um, by by being you know co-located, especially with the town clerk. Um, you know, so when people are doing research, it makes it you know, a lot easier. We get a lot of people that come in um, and get funneled either from our office to your office to the town clerk's office or vice versa. And it, it's made it, um, especially for, for people who aren't familiar with, with the area. Um, we get a lot of people from out of town or people who are coming in to get family information and to be able to look things up in both both your vaults as well as our records. Um, we get a lot of people saying how, how helpful that is. So. so I'm just real quick looking at this here, Vince. It, it, it currently, they're not having a, a, a log, security log, or any kind of sign-in log. Not that we see. I, 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 I feel personally that it'd be nice if, if they had started to uh, have a sign-in log time and date, so at least we know who's in the building at what time yeah. and, and when they check out. Yeah. It's just kind if of- you'd the, like, If you'd like some context to that comment, um, we, we do have our own roster, sign-in roster, um, that we have for people coming into our office. And any time that we have meetings in the common area, we always have a sign-in sheet as well. So, so that would be incorrect. Well, no, I'd just like to see that it's given to the administrator, to, to Mr. Conti, so that we we have an act that we know on a regular basis. Yeah. 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 Our thought there is that it might, um, and again, we have not talked since we're kind of kind of in listening mode here, trying to understand what the town's concerns are. Um, but being that you have access to the office, as long as it's in a, a um, it's, it's in an accessible area. You can go in and see the, the login sheet at any time. Are you aware of that? Yes, that's like, I guess nobody knows where it is. That's so. Yeah. Well, it's in a very yeah. common place by the front door. So, um, so when people come in, they know to sign in. But I, I think what you're saying is that we just need to have, because it goes both ways anytime then the town would, because I don't think the town's been signing into that sheet when they come into the office. So we would need to do that both ways, that anybody coming in from the town, entering the office, would also need to sign into that as well. That way we know who's, who's in our office. I, I have to go in there yeah, one quick, do a fire extinguisher check. Oh, okay, because otherwise mm -hmm. not. Yeah, otherwise they're not. Yeah, there's a, there's or occasionally in the electrical. Yeah. Is there cameras in that office? Nope. No, but I don't. I don't think we have any cameras on site, do we? No, it's outside. Yeah. Just, no, outside. Outside. Yeah, outside. I just like to say that yeah. I think the Historical Society has value. It's a, uh, a volunteer organization that contributes to the town. So I would uh, hope that uh, whatever issues we're discussing here, we can keep very amiable and uh, continue the, the service and uh, make sure we don't create controversy out of something that should not be controversial. Yeah, and, and I guess that's, a, if I might make a comment, we're kind of feeling a little broadsided here because all of this kind of came out of nowhere and we really had no notification at all. And so we're kind of not sure where the concerns came from what the concerns were. I mean, all of this is kind of new 
information to all of us. And it unfortunately came up, you know, with a rather physical way of, you know, us finding that the town had concerns. But we're here to be partners and, um, you know, past, present, and future, you know, literally and figuratively. And so we, we would like to keep things, you know, appreciate that comment. Uh, because I think it's important to know that, you know, we're here to be part of this. I mean, my, my uh, ancestors, my, uh, uh, have always been uh, heavily involved in the town and the running of the town and in maintaining the history of the town. Harvey Dodge, um, you know, and Clarence um, were, were town, town officials for decades and decades. And Harvey funded the first book about uh, the history of, of Berlin. Um, so I have a very personal connection. You know, all of this stuff is handed down family, you know, generation upon generation. I mean, um, Brad, you know, you know that as well. I mean, the whole, the way we run as a small town community is, um, by embracing it and everybody contributing and and uh, and and supporting supporting each other, um, and my family has been in Berlin since the early 1800s. Um, so, so the historical society is very important to me personally, as well as we feel we do provide a, a valuable service that people never know when they're going to find it useful to them in their lives. So hopefully we can keep this going and know that if you have concerns, we want to hear them, but let's just go ahead and share and make sure we're addressing this as a community. Um, you know, we're not trying to be adversarial and we hope that you're not trying to be adversarial with us either. Anything more here? So take in, um, you can have uh, you can get hold of Mr. Kuzik. See what he has in mind for uh, yep. to protect the town and protect the uh, historical society. So, well, anything else? If not, thank you very much for showing up. Thank okay, you. Okay, one other one other thing I would like to ask. Um, I guess when the the key when the door was reversed, so that we now can into the common area. Um, we were not provided a, a key to the door. <clears throat> and I just wondered, is there a reason why we don't have a, a, a copy of the key? Well, I, I guess my question is, uh, I don't understand after the initial conversation, why you need a copy of the key to go into the office if you're coming out and it's unlocked? Well, because you never know, someone might you know, lock the door. Or, you know. I'm happy to give them a key. Yeah. They want one if the board's okay with that. I mean, it just has to go from this side in. Yeah. So happy to. It allows us if we have a meeting, you know, we can if we need to lock the door or if someone else is having a meeting. I mean, it would just I think it'd be a lot more convenient. Okay. Um, any feelings on that? I mean, I don't. I don't have any problem with that. So just supply them with the key. Can do. Yep. Anything else? No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate all that you guys are doing. Okay. Partridge Farm permit application decision. That yeah, that's the, the stormwater runoff permit application um, that we submitted. It's a hundred percent grant. Um, it covers the um, basically the uh, the planning phase of their project down there. I did speak with the homeowners association uh, down there. Um, you know, we were under the impression from the letter that we got that they were looking for us to participate in the funding. Um, really what they were asking for after talking with them is, um, can we help them via grants? So the answer is yes, we can get a 100% grant for the planning purpose. Um, it's, I think the initial quote that they sent, I should have had that in the package and I didn't, was around 17 or 18,000. Um, the actual loan covers more than that in case it runs over. It's, we actually put in for 30. 
um, just in case, but it's 100%. Again, it's 100% grant. It's no, not going to be any cost to the town for that um, to, uh, to help them with that and cover our portion of that three acre stormwater runoff because of the roads in the area. And this is so, just as, as this design, right? This is for the design, design phase, of, phase of the project. Okay. They're not asking us to participate. Um, in my discussion with the homeowners association, they were not asking us to participate in any monies beyond that in the okay. work. Your motion? Make a motion to submit the parking form permit application state revolving loan program grant application. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. I wanted to say they've got a very colorful grant. <laughs> <laughs> I did that just for you. It's a happy grant. <laughs> stand out, stand out the crowd. Uh, Route 12 building demo bid. Yes, so we sent that out to three bidders. We got one bid back uh, with Gillespie and the, the, con the, the, the bid and the uh, RFP from Gillespie's is in your, in your package. It's a total of $37,520. Again, that's fully covered by the funds that we have with the program that, you're, that we are in for that. Um, <coughs> that's pretty much it. But the town does pay for it and then we'll get reimbursed. Yeah, the it's, end. we pay up front and get reimbursed. Yeah. These three, where who do you send them to? Those are the three, yeah. And the top one was outside sitting in his truck. I thought he was trying to get in. He did come in. Oh, he did? He was in okay. here for the 302. Oh, okay. Yeah. He was in here. He was sitting next to Mr. Aluzzi. I make the motion to approve the one bid from Gillespie Fields and Propane, subject being the demolition of 4509 Vermont Route 12 Berlin 05602. And the bid request, they offered a bid of $37,520 to demolish, remove debris, backfill, and seed and mulch property. Second. Second. Okay, and any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see here. Vehicle for use in office space for the Public Works Department employee? Yes? Yes, so that one. Office space, you probably saw it when you drove in. Um, we'll come to that one um, a bit later, but that, that's covered now. Uh, the vehicle that we're talking about, the Public Works Board approached and asked, uh, they knew that we were putting three of the old cruisers up for bid, um, which we have uh, one bid in so far, um, but that uh, is not due until I think October 3rd, so there'll be a bid opening on October 3rd um, on that. They are interested in purchasing the lowest cost of that bid. Um, for the pub use of the new public works employee when they have it. Um, that was this, the discussion. Again, based on what the bids come in, they may or may not want to purchase it as well. Um, just, we all know used cars are going pretty high. Uh, the bid that we got incidentally is from a company, I believe, uh, that has bid on vehicles here before. They're out of uh, Illinois. Um, so we're, we're anticipating a, a pretty good uh, value for those vehicles as well but um, I said I'd bring it to the board if the board agrees to give them the opportunity to uh, to purchase that one at the at the bid cost is the vehicle suitable for their needs or is it just I, I told them it's going to need some it's going to need some dollars to put it on the road again okay. they haven't looked at it they haven't inspected it they haven't followed up on it so I'm a little hesitant if it's, if it's going to meet their needs, but again, I will reiterate to that, that to them as well. What what budget will the uh, vehicle purchase come out of? Is so that public works? Public works, so that's the fund uh, from the water and sewer. Or Correct. Well, since those are self-sufficient. Oh, those are SUVs, not okay. pickups. Those are SUVs, correct. Yeah. Two Explorers and a Tahoe. But I do think, I do think, at least two of the three are going to take some, take some money to 
to put them on the road and, and keep them on the road if that's what they want to do with it. Because they're, they're not in the best of condition. <coughs> okay. Um, so you'd have to take, you have to take and talk with the public works board and see if they want to put the put the money up for yeah to equal a bit yeah okay. yep I will okay and, anything, and maintenance above that anything anything else on this no hearing none uh, uh, this decision on Newtown Center branding yeah in your packets there's a resolution that was put together um, I believe it was uh, a planning commission that did a lot of work on this one just so happens there might be a couple here tonight I, and I can read it it says be it resolved by the Berlin select board that the portion of the town of Berlin bounded by the road segments of Vermont Route 62 and Payne Turnpike North Payne Turnpike North and Fisher Road and Fisher Road and Vermont 62 formerly be named Berlin Common and they're just asking for the board approval on that that was what was talked about with the with the planning commission at the, at the meeting and that's what they've provided us so. Do you need a motion on this, your opinion? Yeah, you need no, to. I think so. Okay, I'll make a motion to go with this uh, resolution as presented. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, motion carries. Yeah. Vote. How about a vote? <laughs> vote. Do you have a vote? <laughs> 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 a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 There, there's the vote. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, the, the decision on one year on the job trail rental. And the, yeah, the question is that, do we want to pay monthly um, or do we want to pay in a lump sum? Uh, the total is $11,010.20. And I think, you know, we, we talked about ARPA, but Diane has also said, I think there's some, some money in the general fund. No? Okay. Yeah. Is there a savings paying this all? No. No. Savings? Nope. Is there a chance we'll run out of, we won't have the ARPA money to finish paying? That's up to us. <laughs> There's plenty in there right now. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if down the road the sewer commission would end up paying for a portion of it. Yeah. If they have somebody in there. Should. I guess that's another question that we should ask. Is do we, but do we then again, I can pay the whole thing and then say, hey, you're going to pay half or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. whatever space. Yeah. Instead of a bill. Yeah. Well, What's your suggestion? <laughs> what would you, how would you like to do this, Diane? I think paying annually just gets it over with. And then, like I say, down the road, when we have um, the, the sewer the utilities person in there, then they have to share these things. Okay. And then they could just. Yeah, I agree. Motion on this? I'd make a motion to pay it in the annually, one time annually. There a second? Second. Any discussion on it? The only question that I have is where it, in, it says total including recurring billing charges, delivery, installation, and return. So we're paying, if, if this is uh, agreed to tonight, We'd be paying that annual fee of eleven thousand ten twenty. Would that be a fee every year no. annually uh, for as long as it was the, here? Yeah, as long as it's here. That's mm -hmm. that's the fee. We'd have to redo the contract again next year because I only did it for one year one with year. the anticipation that we'll figure out our needs over the course of the next year. Not have to have that longer than a year, hopefully. And what's the what's the possibility of? not doing it with ARPA funds. Is there, based on what you said, Diane, doesn't sound like there's enough any, right now right. to do I don't it without see doing it. we ARPA. have anything in reserve that mm -hmm. would, that would mm -hmm. apply to that. Mm -hmm. Is that more specific? What we have in reserve is just, it's more specific, but not to something like that. Unless you wanted to change where some of the money went, we can talk about that at another time. And, and refresh my memory, who's going out there? What's the, the, the public works yeah. person and the, and the two listers? And the two listers. 
The other question, is this a new unit or is it um, it's, newer? It, it's newer. It's out there if you want to take a look at it. Okay. No, You're giving tours? Sure. Happy to. <laughs> I told you, it looks like it has bars and a uh, cage. I'm not getting trapped in that. Has it been set up with electric <laughs> as of yet? Uh, no, no. Mr. Felt is supposed to come in this week and take care of that. And, it, and how's the heating? What's the heat? Is it has it heat and AC, pump? central heat and AC unit on the end of the trailer. Okay. Run off electricity? Yeah, it's all electric. They'll have uh, Wi-Fi out there for their laptops. It won't be hardwired. Um, there'll be a booster on the end of the building to make sure they have enough signal. On this, on this billing here, it, the way they word it, um, where is it here? Uh, it has the um, delivery and return. Yes. On it. Yes. If we keep that for more than one year, I asked him that question, right? If we keep it two years, are you are you going to increase the return rate? He said the only thing that would change is the fuel surcharge. Well, I'm just wondering. I mean, each year we're paying we're paying for the return of it. No, that, that's a one-time fee. So if we rent it next year, and that return fee will come off that price. So it should actually be year. less than the, the than 11, 11, 000. 000. correct. Okay. Yeah. Is there any way to have that removed now and pay it if and when it re is returned in the well, future? Well, not now. No. I don't know. Not now we can. No, I think what would happen is uh, they would uh, discount it yeah. the second year, and then if we returned it, it would be the full $11,010. Yeah, and that would be cover the return fee. Okay, a um, uh, motion on this? Nice guy. Oh, yeah. You okay. already had it. <laughs> Come on. Um, it's been a long day. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, approvals of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make a motion tonight to approve payroll warrant 23-05 for payroll from August 14, 2022 to August 27, 2022, paid on August 31st of this year in the amount of $44,236.43. Also payroll warrant 23-06 for payroll from August 28, 2022 to September 10, 2022, paid on September 14th of this year in the amount of $47,000. $468.16. Also payable warrant 23G05 with checks 22259 to 22321 for payables in the amount of $244,030.79 and reconciled August bank statements for the general fund and sewer water checking accounts. Second that motion. Any discussion? Yeah, I just, I, I may have already asked about this, but my memory's failing too. What, what's Sand Hill Solar again? That is the solar uh, company that they, um, our, our electric bought down a little bit and we have the Sand Hill Solar, which is panels that are not here, but we're you know, connected to them. And we have it, part of it is sewer, part of it is water that pays for it, and the town pays for a portion of it. And our electric bills are lower because of it. So. The fee we pay for with that, with our electric bill, is about even. So it's not like we're saving a whole lot of money, but the town at that point is our contribution to going green. green. I told him it's our contribution to going green. Well, a, and you know what? I may have asked us that already, so forgive me. That's and okay. I may ask again in the future <laughs> when I forget, so thank you. But it is, but there's three different sections there, and we just pay a proportion of it. Okay. Any other discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, let's see here. Uh, Mr. Cameron here? Yeah, they just stepped in there with the chief, but he's here. Okay, uh, let's take uh, anybody got anything for anything lengthy for uh, round table? I do not have anything. Uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, I will say that uh, um, 
my first year on the board, so it's a lot of learning for me. But uh, I, I think it's uh, really important that we make sure to uh, maintain um, the decisions within meetings. And uh, it's easy that for emergencies to come up, but uh, I, I'd like to really be sure that we comply with open meeting laws and, and uh, decisions are, are made. And keeping on budget, I think one of the things that I really always hoped to do if I was ever elected to an office, an office is uh, be fiscally responsible. So um, really trying to stick to the budget that's approved by, by the voters. Vince? I got nothing. Entertain a motion to enter into executive session. I make the motion to enter executive session for the union contract, and I move that the board make a specific finding that premature public discussion of issues related to the proposed collective bargaining agreement prior to the board vote on the agreement would place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing none. Motion carries. I further move that the board enter into executive session which shall include the town administrator, police chief, and labor counsel Scott Cameron to review the terms of the proposed collective bargaining agreement and to provide legal counsel to the board prior to its vote on the proposed agreement. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. We're in executive session. <laughs>